The day has come for you to know the truth. For many years, I avoided your questions, my child. About you, about me, about your father. But you must know, you're not from here. Your homeland is to the north, in Bulgaria. Let me tell you a tale. Once, a powerful noble named Constantine led a rebel army to Ternobyl, the capital of Bulgaria. The reigning Tsar, a murderer who had usurped the throne, fled with his son Ivan to the court of the Roman Emperor. The grateful nobles of Bulgaria, a class of men called the Boliars, proclaimed Constantine Tsar. The new king brought peace to Bulgaria. He wed the emperor's niece and even arranged the marriage of the Roman ruler's daughter to a one-eyed Mongol Khan. But such peace was not to last. Men are like wolves. They smell weakness. While riding, the Tsar fell from his horse, shattering his legs and spine. The crippled Tsar watched helplessly as his kingdom descended into anarchy. Tatar raiders invaded his lands, while the Boliars busied themselves with increasing their own power. For fear of the raiders' torch, the peasants accepted the Boliars' whip. A most unlikely man changed this fate. A common pig farmer appeared in a small village. His hands were callous, and his weathered face was like that of any man who worked for his livelihood. But this man was different. Not only did he urge the people to resist the Tatars, but he somehow turned his words into action, leading a militia to defend the villages. Soon, his unlikely successes attracted the attention of far more powerful and ruthless men. We are too late. Tatars were here. Ivelo! Tatar horsemen approach! Crops grow here in the dead of winter. We will need to find animals. The Tatars burned the villages but left the livestock to roam the woods. What is this? Peasants taking up arms in the villages? And your mischief serves. How have you all flogged and hung? mob of serfs with spears and swords. I will not tolerate rebellion in my villages. Tatars grow stronger! Do something useful for Bulgaria! Ally with me! I have a proposition that will make you a powerful man. You dare defy your sire? I will blot you out! You were born a peasant that you will die a peasant.
How I will enjoy crushing you. I may be crippled, but I am a sir, and you are a peasant. Never forget that. The only man who kept the Mongol Khan and the Roman Emperor at bay. Cannot understand the ruin. Sometimes the actions of others force us to make drastic decisions. Such was the case with Ivailo. Whatever his intentions, the armed band he led grew beyond him. It became a force of fury and of revenge. Having overthrown their masters, the peasants took vengeance on the hated nobles, murdering their families before blinding them with scorching hot needles. Ivailo himself was said to have slain Constantine. The Tsar's severed head was carried by a horseman to turn up the capital. There, it was presented to the Tsar's wife, Maria, and their seven-year-old son. After her husband's murder, the Tsarina ruled the kingdom in disarray. Though this would have challenged even the most capable Tsar, the dark-haired Greek princess was greater than most men. Beautiful and cunning, Maria Paleologina Cantacuzene was a daughter of two of the greatest families in Constantinople. She had wed the Tsar on the orders of her uncle, the Emperor, but her Byzantine guile proved as much a benefit to her husband. When a rival Bollier threatened Constantine's rule, Maria offered to adopt him as her son and heir. The opportunistic Bollier accepted and feasted in the Tsar's court, only to be found dead shortly afterward poisoned. But now, with an uprising in the countryside and scheming bolliards in her own court, it would take all of Maria's cunning to preserve her power. But a more threatening menace came from her own uncle. The headstrong Roman Emperor Mikhail Palaiologos demanded his niece's submission. The Tsarina, just as strong-willed, refused. Furious that his own niece stifled his ambition, the Emperor chose an exiled prince to place on the Bulgarian throne. Ivan, the returning son of the Asen dynasty deposed by Constantine, led a great Roman army to retake his father's kingdom. The Tsarina alone could not defeat the Romans, nor could Ivailo challenge both the Tsarina and Ivan. The logic of these facts dictated the most unlikely alliance between a rebel leader and the wife of the Tsar he murdered. Ivan Asin and his Roman thugs are desecrating the church of the Patriarchs. Save the church and you will be rewarded beyond your dreams. Little Piglet has come to play. Do not worry, Piglet. You will have a place in my kingdom. Shaveling take down. Join me, Ivailo. I promise you that no woman is quite like me. I grow weary of you. I will crush you now and take the throne from the palace of men. Oh, that pesky little Ivan is still running about. It would please me if you made him squeal for mercy. Our 
your enemies have stolen the relics of Saint Ivan of Rila. It would give me such pleasure if you found the relics and brought them to the monastery. Yeah, yeah, yeah! This cannot be! You have made very powerful enemies, swineherd! The Emperor will not forget this! Ivailo's army filled the Yantra River with Roman dead, securing Maria's place in the throne. Now, the Tsarina had to fulfill her end of the bargain. As Ivailo approached the gates of the fortress, Maria waited silently for the man who had killed her husband. As Ivailo stepped before her, the Tsarina placed the Tsar's crown, once worn by her husband and father of her child, on the swineherd's head crowning a peasant a king. The objections of the watching nobility were silent but palpable. Then, in a hasty ceremony, Maria wed the newly crowned Tsar, tying her fate with his. Vilo watched suspiciously as the Boliars bowed their heads in his presence. No matter what respect they showed him as Tsar in daylight, he knew they whispered and cursed him in the shadows. Murderer! Peasants come! Ternovo might be the city of the Tsars, but it belonged to the Boliars. Ivailo knew that remaining there would be a death sentence, but he was tied to the city. The Tsarina was carrying his child, yet fatherhood would have to wait. The Emperor was undeterred by even Asin's defeat. He enlisted his son-in-law, a great Mongol warlord named Nogai, to unleash war on Bulgaria. A descendant of Genghis Khan, Nogai was broad-shouldered and barrel-chested. He had lost an eye battling a brother in the Caucasus, a disfigurement that cost him the chance to rule as Khan of the Golden Horde. However, that was to his liking. Nogai was not a man to sit idly in a golden tent. He became the kingmaker and the real power behind the horde, leading its warriors into battle. Mongols, Tatars, humans, warriors as numerous as blades of grass streamed across the Danube into Bulgaria. Ivailo raced in the middle of the night to the river town of Drasta. There, he would raise an army and make his stand. In Ternovo, the Tsarina, alone and with child, waited for his return. The Mongols have challenged the champion to single combat. Pranislav has volunteered. If he dies before we reach Trashtar, the garrison will lose hope and surrender to the Mongols. We must hurry, Ivalio. Finally, come, Tsar of the Borgos! <laughs> Logai Khan looks forward to a great battle! Do not disappoint him! Tsar, do not worry yourself over resources. We have stocked the town with everything you will need. Lead our armies, and we will provide for them. Sir, a Tatar has been waiting for you outside the city vaults. He calls himself Kasim Bey, and says he has an offer for you. Sir Ivolo, we are kindred spirits. We both wish to free our peoples. Kill the Khans who rule the Tatars and Cumans, and these tribes will turn against the Mongols.
My data brothers, I have freed you. Ride, ride against Nogai Khan. Nogai Khan's horsemen are like blades of grass on the open steppe. Thousands may be trampled, but the horde marches on. <laughs> You are now free. Destroy the Mongols. Strong steel can only come from a hot forge. You have shown Nogai Khan who is weakest among his warriors. You fight well. Nogai Khan will grant you a noble death. You will be boiled alive and impaled in front of Nogai's tent! Ha <laughs> ha! The smell of burnt flesh and the taste of blood! Does it not fill you with joy? approached Draster and called for the Tsar. Ivaila wondered, was this a messenger of the One-Eyed Khan offering peace? But as the Tsar raised himself against the battlements, he could see the horseman was a Bulgarian. What word did he bring from Ternova? Did he come to tell Ivaila of the birth of his child? No, the rider bore a message which chilled Ivaila and the survivors of the siege. Tsar the horsemen began. Your men in Ternova are dead, murdered by the Boliars who have opened the gates to Ivan Asen. Ivan has taken the Zarina and your newborn child and delivered them as prisoners to the Emperor. Ivailo rode south, galloping past torched villages and overturned fields. He rode under the tall peaks and through the narrow passages of the Balkan Mountains. There, the remnants of his army would make their final stand. A great Roman army was approaching, sent to reinforce Ivan's faction in Ternovo. The army was commanded by the general, Mikhail Glabas, who had strengthened his already impressive numbers with Tatar mercenaries. With Ivan in the north and the Romans marching from the south, Ivailo knew neither refuge nor retreat remained for his last followers. His men would win or die in these mountain passes. But these valleys had witnessed impossible victories before. Here was where Bulgarian Khans and Tsars etched their places in history. The walls of granite rock echoed the names of heroes like Krum, Simeon, and Kaloyan, the Roman slayer. To these, the names of Ivailo and his man would be added. Bulgarians, lay down your swords and turn over the one called Ivailo. The Emperor will spare your lives. He only demands your leader. Roman dog, come and take him. I have heard of scouting with sheep, but pigs? <laughs> That's crazy enough to work.
Ah, a Tatar warband came through here looking for the Roman supply camp. Their leader said he was a friend of yours. You are quite popular with the Romans, it seems, sir. It's about time you come here. Welcome to Kotel Pass, the Valley of Death. Sir, I have no intention of discouraging you from killing every cursed Roman. But our goal should be Devnia. If we take the castle, we control the region. The Emperor has taken good care of your wife and child, Ivailo. He will be merciful to you. Surrender now! I'm coming for you, Ivailo! Tsar, it is me, Kasim. You knew I could not let you fight alone. Go on to the pass. My men are in position to raid the Roman rear. Sir, I bring a news from Paranoval. That cursed dog, Ivan Asan, has fled like a coward after hearing how we have been killing Romans here. Sir, I will go to Paranoval at once. I will rally your supporters and we will take back the city. Ivailo's impossible victory at the Kotel Pass brought fear to Ivan. He abandoned Ternova and fled to the Emperor's court. The Emperor offered no solace to a coward. In Ternovo, no sooner had the Boliars discovered the Tsar's throne empty than they began to squabble over it. The wisest of the Boliars reminded the others that the kingdom was still threatened by both Mongols and Romans. Bulgaria needed stability and that would mean all Boliars would need to unite under a single banner. From among their ranks, the Boliars found a warrior to defend and unite the kingdom. A man descended from the tribe of the legendary Cuman warrior, Kotyan. They chose Georgi Terter as Tsar. Betrayed by Georgi Terter, Ivalu returned to Ternovo, but the gates were barred to him. His men finally gave up hope. They returned to their fields, their uprising in Ivalo's brief reign just a memory, to be lost and forgotten. But Ivalo could not forget. As he stood powerless before the city's walls, the weight of his fate as a mere pig herder finally weighed upon him. He had defied all odds. He had not just challenged a Tsar, a Khan and an Emperor, but had upset the very order of the world. He, a swineherd, had dared to overthrow kings and make men free. With these thoughts, Ivailo took the greatest risk of his life. Perhaps blinded by his ambition, or blinded by his hope, Ivailo turned to his enemy for help. He sought redemption in the land of the blind, where the one-eyed man is king. Bring me the head of that renegade Bardolfo. Evil it is me, Cassim. I will go my own way to Nogai Khan and meet you there. I have made arrangements with one Radu Negru. He will help you cross the Carpathians. You must be the Tsar that Kasim Bey spoke of. Hmm. You do not look as impressive as he made you seem. Come, I have a cap. 
The Hungarians oppress my people. Help me overthrow the oligarch Roland Borsa and you will have a way out of the mountains. My monk can speak to some of the villagers to start a revolt, but we must be cautious. The Hungarians will crush any overt military force. Da. Punyata. Rikazanian. Kouroji. Banner. Looks like your rival, Ivan Asen, has similar intentions to meet with Nogai. Da. Thank you, Tsar. No matter what happens to your people, you have helped free Valeria. Take comfort in that. Now, go to Nogai Khan. Exalted Khan, on bended knees so that my people have a chance to be free once more. I ask for your support against those who enslaved my people. You are not the first Tsar come to grovel at Nogai's feet, but you have twice the manhood of this Ivan Asen. The Great Khan has joined the ancestors. Nogai cannot war until a successor sits in the Golden Tent. You will raid Kiev and Crimea in Nogai's name! Do this, and Nogai will consider your request. Speak! Ex 
Sultan Khan, I have done what you have asked. Against my wishes, I have murdered innocent men and women so that you will favor me and Bulgaria will be free once again. You are an honorable warrior, but honor alone does not make men free. Come into the tent and tell no guy why he should favor you. The One-Eyed Khan ordered a feast for Revilo and Ivan Asen, where he listened to their arguments on why he should support one over the other. Then, having heard enough, Nogai rose and pointed to Ivailo. In that moment, it is said that Nogai's guards seized Ivailo and murdered him. The body was taken away as Nogai returned to his seat and finished his meal. But I am not so sure that was the end of our hero. In the years since, Ivailo has appeared again in many places and many times. Wherever the downtrodden have the courage to fight for freedom and justice, Ivailo seems to appear. He lives in all of us, and especially in you, my child. I can see you're confused. I know you're thinking, what does this big herding czar have to do with me? Don't you see, my dear? I lived in Bulgaria then. So did you, in fact. You were very young then. A mere baby when I wrapped you in your swaddling clothes and carried you here. It was on the day when the Emperor, my uncle, took us from Ternobyl and from your father, Tsar Ivailo.